This is Matt from Universal CPA Review, and thanks for tuning into this video on data visualization. This was a great video to make because it helps you illustrate data in a visual manner, right? Just like Universal CPA Review does for visual learners while they're studying for the CPA exam. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're studying for the CPA exam and want to join some study groups. Join our Facebook groups. The link is in the description. And then if you're contemplating trying our course, well, luckily we have a free 14 day trial, 100% access. So please use that. And then lastly, please reach out to us to learn about any promotions and the Spilt Milk program, right? That's been a hot program lately. So now let's dive into this video on data visualization and get you ready for the CPA exam. Today we're going to talk about data visualization and how it's relevant to today's business world. Now we've talked about data analytics and audit. If you've taken audit, now we're going to talk about how data visualization can be used by companies to interpret their own data. So in this video, we're going to talk about the power of data visualization. We're going to talk about some of the benefits of data visualization. We're going to talk about the different types of data visualization charts and graphs. And lastly, what are the golden rules to follow with data visualization? So that's what this video focuses on. Let's dive right in. So how could we define data visualization? Well, fortunately, the name kind of says it all, right? It's the process of taking data and turning it into visual representations or graphic representations. Data visualization allows us to bring data to life and it makes it easier for us to see trends and patterns that otherwise we would just not be able to identify if it was in a table format. So as you can see in this visual, right, isn't it much easier to interpret the visual rather than the table that's on the left, right? This data isn't necessarily connected, but I wanted to illustrate just how different it can be, right? If we looked at the left, well, I don't know what the trend is. On the right, well, I can see, you know, the bars go up and down. There's a line graph, right? It's just easier to interpret. And just like visual learning for the CPA exam, it's much easier for humans to process visual representations rather than text or data in tables, right? So that is why data visualization is so powerful and that's why it's emerging in today's business world. So what are the benefits of data visualization, right? Well, data visualization, again, has become increasingly important because companies have been accumulating massive collections of data for the last few years. And so what can we do with this data? Well, we can either leave it in our systems or we can extract it to look at patterns, trends, insights from all of these large data sets. And later on, you'll learn a little bit more about what types of charts and graphs we can use but let's focus on the benefits, right? So as you can see in this visual, well, it helps us make educated business decisions, right? We can use those data visualizations to identify the trends and make a business decision. It can help us assess business performance with KPIs, right? What type of KPIs are important to the business? Well, now we can create these graphs or charts to help us consistently monitor those KPIs. And real quick, let's expand on KPIs, right? Because we talked about this back in business processes and it was a type of supervisory detective control, but let's look at some KPIs, right? Well, what if we wanted to track the number of new customers or average revenue per customer, our market share, our net promoter score, order fulfillment time, or response to customer complaints, right? These are all KPIs that if we had this data buried in a system or a table, it'd be hard to read. But now with data visualization and charts, we can easily monitor and track the performance of these KPIs. And then the last key benefit, it's just that interested parties can more quickly understand trends and insights, right? So let's say that you're a process owner, right? And you have all this data on revenue by product. Well, you might know it inside and out because this is your daily job. But what if you had to share it with investors or the executive team or the board of directors, right? Those are interested parties that will want to understand 
you know, what revenue by product is. And so we need to help them see that. And that's where data visualization can make it very easy for these interested parties to quickly understand the trends and generate some insights and then go about their job, right? So that is why data visualization is so beneficial to an organization. Now, I'm sure there's some benefits I left out, but those are the three ones that I felt were most important. So now that we've focused on the power of data visualization and the benefits, what different types of data visualization are out there? And why do I need to know these? Well, the CPA exam will want to make sure that you have a basic understanding of what the data visualization chart or graph is, and then you may or may not be required to interpret that. So we're gonna go through and I'll show you just some basic, basic data visualization charts and graphs that you need to understand and be familiar with for the exam. So let's start with a waterfall chart, which is sometimes referred to as a bridge chart. And why is that? Well, we're gonna bridge two periods. So as you can see in this chart, right, we're going from year one EBITDA of $100 to year two EBITDA of $300. And basically in between, we have revenue, cost of goods sold, and operating expenses. And what this waterfall chart does is helps illustrate the change in these accounts and their impact to overall EBITDA, right? And how we can get from that $100 to $300. So off to the right is the comparative income statement. And this is what we would use to create this waterfall chart. So as you can see for revenue, well, it increased $500, right? And when revenue increases, that's a positive impact for EBITDA. That's why it's up 500. Now you might look at it and go, did cost of goods sold and operating expenses decrease? Well, no, they actually increased, right? And again, because operating expenses and cost of goods sold bring down EBITDA, well, that's why they're negative in this chart, right? That's why, you know, we have a negative 200 because as you can see for cost of goods sold, it increased 200. And same thing with operating expense, right? So this is how you read a waterfall chart. It's super helpful to help understand or visualize, you know, what impacted a company's change in EBITDA or revenue or net income between periods. And so this is a super popular chart, especially in the accounting and finance worlds. The next chart is a scatter plot. And this is an old school chart that has been around in Excel forever, right? And so basically a scatter chart allows you to display two variables for a set of data, right? So in this example, we have salary and house price by individual, right? And so what we would do is we would plot this data and then say, okay, is there a trend? Can I draw some insights from it? Well, looking at it, you'll see as the salary goes up from left to right, it looks like the amount they spend on their house also goes up. So I would say as a person's salary increases, well, so does the amount they spend on a house, right? So this is a scatter plot. Again, it just allows us to plot two variables, right? And we can easily visualize what's going on here. A bubble chart is very similar to a scatter plot, except in this one, you'll notice all the bubbles are different sizes, right? In our scatter plot, they're all the same size. And a bubble chart allows us to add a third variable. So the two variables are revenue and consumer rating, right? But that doesn't necessarily cause the bubbles to be different sizes. So that third variable, that's what's driving that change in size. And so it could be something like gross margin, right? That means product A, product B, they have higher gross margins than the other products there, right? So bubble charts are great because it allows us to just visually see what pops out. So again, just remember with a bubble chart, when we blow bubbles, they're all different sizes. That's the third variable. And that's basically why bubble charts are so great, right? We can easily see exactly what's going on. The next chart is a Pareto chart. This is a great chart and I went ahead and did it why candidates pass the CPA exam, right? So what we would do is collect data and basically the bars represent the count or volume or frequency. And we always start with the highest amount on the left and then we descend down, right? And what's interesting about a Pareto chart is it also has a line that shows how it accumulates up to 100%, right? So as you can see, we don't know exactly what amount the hard work 
is from a percentage perspective, but as you see, it goes up and to the right to 100%. And that just basically means that we've included 100% of the responses, you know, for this Pareto chart, right? So that's a Pareto chart. It's fairly unique. Just try to remember that it has a line, it has bars, and you'll be all set. The next chart is an area chart. It's very similar to a line chart, except it fills in the area below, right? And so the benefit of an area chart is it allows us to plot volume or quantity for specific items over a period of time, right? And it allows us to see visually how the change in volume and quantity develop over time, right? So in this one, we see, you know, some peaks and valleys for each of the different products and generally what amount of area they cover, right? So an area chart, just remember, it's got everything filled in below. It's gonna look something like this. A Gantt chart, which was created by Henry Gantt, is pretty much focused on project management, right? That's the whole reason it was created. And as you can see in this visual, well, on the left side or the y-axis, we have the various tasks, and then going across are horizontal bars, right? And those just generally represent the start date, the end date, the duration of those activities, right? Basically helps us understand the timeline. And it all goes back to project management, right? We can see task A starts first, and then task B starts somewhere in the middle of the timeline for task A, right? And then ultimately C and D follow. This allows the whole team to be aligned on what activities or tasks need to be performed and when they would start, when they would end, and what their duration is. So again, this is a Gantt chart. It's for project management primarily, but there could be other uses out there. The next chart is a tree map chart. This is one of my favorite charts, and it illustrates composition of 100%. So let's say that we we're looking at five different companies and we want to compare their market capitalization. Well, we can easily see in this tree map chart that company A is by far the largest, right, at 500 million. And then company B, company C, they're smaller, but you know, still relatively big at 120 million and 100 million each. Um, you know, and then we see company E is by far the smallest, right? So it allows you to just visually understand the composition or the relative size to other things, other variables, right? So that is a tree map chart, very popular in finance, accounting, to help illustrate again the composition of whatever you want to illustrate. Next, we have a pie chart, and it's similar to a tree map chart, except it's in the shape of a pie, right? And again, it allows us to illustrate proportion or composition. So if a company had three products, and we want to understand, okay, out of these three products, what percent does each of them make up? Well, we would see product A and product B they're at 45% each, and then product C comes in with the remaining 10%, right? So we can see that product C is by far the smallest. Again, this is just a great way to illustrate proportion of whatever we want to illustrate. Next up is a geography chart, and the name says it all here. It's just a way to geographically illustrate where a company has activity. So if we had a company that's a global company, and we want to understand what countries or areas they have sales, we could use a geography chart. So in this example, well, that's gonna be the orange, right? So if they have sales, it's in orange. We can see they have it in North America, Australia, other parts. They don't have it in say Africa, parts of Russia, or other areas in gray, right? So again, it's very easy to see where a company has activity or presence and where they do not. Next up, we have the column chart and the bar chart. These are presented together because they're essentially the same type of chart. It just depends which direction the data is presented, right? So if it's vertically represented, it's a column chart. If it's horizontally represented, it's a bar chart, right? So the hardest thing about these is just remembering which direction they go. But if you can, super simple to understand and to pick out what type of data visualization it is. Moving on, we have a line chart. Again, very simple. It's just a series of points connected by a line. Now, if you're trying to impress your boss, do something more than a line chart. Maybe it's just simple and this is the easiest thing to do. As you can see, right, 
we have the data points and then a line connects them all. There's really not much else to say. It's a basic data visualization. So keep that in mind. Again, it's a line chart. The name says it all. Next up is a pyramid chart and it's called that because it's in a pyramid. And a pyramid chart just allows us to see hierarchy between products or really whatever else you want to compare. And so you have horizontal sections and that represents different layers of the pyramid. And we would always go from smallest to largest. So in this case, right, we're comparing product revenue. So for product A, it's on top. It has the smallest amount of revenue compared to product B and C. And then product C would have the largest amount of revenue, right? So very easy to see from top to bottom, the hierarchy. So that's a pyramid chart. This is one of my favorite charts and it's called a funnel chart because everything goes into the funnel at the top and then it works its way down to the small piece. Now funnel chart is going to be used most commonly to illustrate various stages in a process. So a great example is a company's sales funnel, right? So think about a business. They get tons of interested customers or leads, right? They come to them and everybody starts at the top of the funnel. And then a company is going to have different ways of pushing or moving their customers towards purchase. So in this example, well, next up would be a sales call. So how many uh, percentage of those leads end up having a sales call, right? And then it goes one step further. They have a trial period and ultimately they purchase. And it allows us to see what percentage, you know, moves on to the next stage of the funnel or what percentage drops off. So just remember this little sales lady, she has her sales funnel. Life is good, right? Because she's illustrated exactly how many leads she's pushing through the funnel to purchase. So again, that's a funnel chart. There's a million different ways we can use a funnel chart, but again, a sales funnel is the most common. So those are all the various types of data visualization that are included in the materials today. More could be added to the study guide or online, but this is the key set of data visualization charts and graphs to know. So let's move on to the golden rules of data visualization, right? And these are just considered to be rules of thumb because when it comes to data visualization, it is something that we can make super complex, right? You're creating the chart, but ultimately you're creating it for your audience. So that is step or rule number one, build for your audience. Think about who your audience is and what question you are trying to answer for them. If you don't keep that in mind, you're going to end up with a chart that might look good, but it doesn't actually do any good for anyone, right? It's not beneficial. Golden rule number two is to choose the right method. So we just went through a bunch of data visualization charts and graphs. How do you choose the right one? Well, that's ultimately up to you. And it goes back to who's your audience, what will they understand, and what kind of question are you trying to answer for them? Golden rule number three, make sure that there's proper labels and colors, right? You have to categorize each of the axes, put call outs, put a chart title on, whatever you need to do. Also with colors, make sure that whatever you're really trying to highlight, it stands out, right? So if you're trying to show the, the line, the trend from the line, make sure that stands out in the overall chart. And then the last golden rule, it's a basic one, but keep it simple right? Data visualization is supposed to make it easy for us to understand. And if we have this complex data visualization, then it doesn't keep it simple, right? It keeps it hard. So always keep it simple. Could anybody pick this up? Could your mom, your dad, your sister, could they pick it up and understand what is going on in your data visualization? And if that's the case, then you have kept it simple. So going back to what I talked about at the beginning of the video, what did we learn today? Well, we learned about the power of data visualization. We learned about the benefits of data visualization. We learned about the different types of data visualization. And then we also learned the golden rules of data visualization, right? So keep that in mind. Data visualization is going to be an ever evolving topic on the CPA exam and for the business world in general. So keep up with it.